Uh, so today I'll be talking about something called um, IDBox. Uh, IDBox is uh, it's a project for non-profit um, and building a foundation for identity in developing country. Um, so I will try to stay high level because it's I don't have that much of time to go uh, very technical aspect of the project. I would rather prefer uh, telling you what I've been doing, what we've been doing in developing countries around identities. Uh, first, about myself, I'm a developer and entrepreneur, and I've got a master in electrical engineering and master in computer science, and I've been building different projects around uh, fintech, transportation, energy, um, all kind of project. Um, and then I will tell you why I'm, um, I'm telling you all of this. Um, so the main problem worldwide, already people, a lot of people already mentioned this problem, but you've got 1.5 billion people in the world that like uh, official identification. And we're talking about countries where you don't have internet, you don't have electricity, and you don't have smartphone. So if you think about all those different startups that try to solve the identity problem by building a very fantastic uh, smartphone application, um, for those people, it's, it's not relevant because they don't have a smartphone, so they cannot really use the application. Um, so we, we're building, we're using, we're starting to use blockchain and we're building all this kind of uh, crazy application, but still those people, they cannot really uh, profit from the, the new technology. So uh, I've been, for the past nine months, I've been trying to build something that developing country could use in order to first create a unique identity and then access to different services. And the main goal is having a device that don't really need internet, don't need a, a grid electricity, and um, doesn't require a smartphone. Um, so, and the people can use it by having either an uh, analog phone or by having uh, a smart card. And also it has to be, uh, has to be um, cheap, so everyone can actually buy it. And uh, the private information from the user is not saved into a central uh, database, like the Estonian government is doing, or like the ADA project from India. So I will quickly show you a video, what I've been doing. The video is a bit, it's nine months old, so the project involved, but you don't have time to edit the video, so. I'm not sure if we can play. ID Box is a cost-efficient device that enables people within developing countries to create a unique identity. The ID Box device is composed of a Raspberry Pi, SMS chip, fingerprint recognition and a solar panel. By combining these components, it allows us to create a secure identity-based service that will revolutionise the way that developing countries participate in a range of activities. From Papua New Guinea to Ghana to Samoa, we are able to ship the device to any local area, even if they don't have power or the internet. The devices, which cost less than $50, are hosted in a range of centralised areas like schools, churches, banks and coffee shops. People use their SMS phones to text the ID box device to create a unique mapping of their phone and fingerprint, creating a personal ID. Once someone has created an ID, they don't need to use the box again unless they want to assign their ID to a new phone. Across the country, millions of people do not have an ID. This is John. He has recently heard about ID box. Using his phone and the local ID box which is located at his nearby church, he is able to create a unique ID. He sends an SMS to the ID box to activate the registration process. He puts his finger on the fingerprint scanner. The box then encrypts the fingerprint using an advanced encryption process and then sends the hash of the fingerprint by SMS to the blockchain attached with John's phone number. If the identity doesn't exist, it then creates a new identity on the blockchain and sends a confirmation message to John on his phone to confirm his new unique ID. With his new identity, John is now able to view his balance, history of transactions he has made, and to securely transfer money to other people who have created a unique ID. Each time John wishes to make a transfer with other active users, his unique ID is verified against the blockchain. He is quickly notified of his transactions on his phone. He can also participate in voting systems, healthcare registration, and ownership of land. Thanks to IDBox, John's engagement with these activities has been revolutionized. 
Um, so this is there was the video from nine months ago. Um, so you can think about all the different problems. It's not possible today with a private key or unique key from a fingerprint. Well, it's not actually un entirely true if you stay to your very local village and uh, you, uh, you use like kind of like fuzzy logic extractors and all this stuff. Uh, that's what we've actually been doing in uh, two different places in the world. Um, that was the first implementation of the ID box. Uh, looks like a bomb, but it's not. Uh, so basically, you use Ivy's uh, sensor. You got the phone number on the bottom of the box. Uh, don't text it. Uh, I, that was my mistake. I put the phone number, but now I had to delete it because people were sending me SMS. Um, and you've got a SIM card on the right-hand side. Um, so basically, the SIM card can be bought from anywhere in the world. So you ship the box to, this is the idea, this is the main idea basically. You ship the box to any local area and then they just have to buy a local SIM card to have um, either internet communication or SMS for communication. And then the solar panel charge the box because you don't have electricity. And you can also add a password and um, information on the, on the screen. Then I build this new version. Um, that was the new version of the ID box, uh, version one I called it. I want to Papua New Guinea uh, to run a proof of concept that was using a uh, private, um, private database uh, through, uh, for three different institutions, the Central Bank of Papua New Guinea, uh, the microeconomy uh, loan, and uh, mobile, mobile, um, mobile providers. Uh, but the problem is this kind of box can be very easily hacked. Uh, and people can perform, um, like if they try to copy a fingerprint from someone and then try to create a new identity. Um, so then I, uh, sorry, I forgot to remove the stuff. Uh, then I raised quite a lot of money from private uh, grants, not ICO. Um, and uh, <laughs> so with the money, it was, it was quite a reasonable of money, but this was my new desk, so I moved from my desktop to my living room. Uh, and I built um, open source uh, 2D printer. So basically the idea was to build kind of open source, um, uh, open source the entire project and build a, that uh, everyone can actually build the ID box to create a unique identity. Um, so I designed and I put the file online so everyone can actually download them and can, can play with the, 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 the ID box. That was version, uh, so version one on the top. And actually, I'm, I'm the first one. I mean, IDBox is the first one to create a first 2D printed uh, Java card that everyone can print and modify and then can save uh, like a personal token inside from a, a daily fingerprint template. I will show you why it's, uh, it can be used for. Um, so that's the um, that's a new uh, ID box. Um, so you've got a Linux distribution system and a screen inside. Rather than having uh, just uh, Raspberry Pi, because Raspberry Pi for for people they're not really uh, technology. Uh, they don't really they don't interact often with uh, screens and technology in a, in a really remote area. So you do you have a good screen and you can do different kind of you can access different services. So you can. Um, you can unroll yourself, so you can create a unique identity, and you can have you can use the box as a voting system, or uh, send money, or receive money. So if you if you remember the previous presentation, they were talking about how costly it is to receive money for those people in the village. Most of the time, they have to travel uh, six hours into the capital to receive money from the son who, for example, works in Australia. So the sun send money to, uh, to Papua New Guinea, to Western Union. Western Union, most of the time, charge 30, 40%. And then the person in the village has to travel to the, 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 the capital, six hours. Cost them about 100, um, 100 uh, the local money over there, which is almost the money they would receive for them son, from their son. So it's, uh, it's a complete disaster. Uh, but this you can use as a getaway for receiving money using an Ethereum card. So you've got the SIM card on the side, you've got the char solar charging port, um, you've got ch uh, charging ports, so people can actually sell electricity to other people in the village. Why is it important? For people over there, they've got analog phone, but they don't have system to 
charge the analog phone. So they need to travel six hours to the, to the top of the mountain and find someone who's carrying a very huge battery system, and then they buy the electricity. With this system, a local shop, they can actually buy the box and then sell the, the electricity back to the people in the village. And it's a modular, modular box. So basically what, you, what it is, is you can increase the security. Uh, if, if you're talking about a big village and you, you, you worry about collision into creating your private or public key, uh, then you can add iris sensor and blood sensor. You can add different um, uh, biometric systems. So using the multimodal biometric uh, authentication system. The, at the end of the day, the private key obviously is never saved because you are the private key. That's the main idea of the project. And you can encrypt either you can sign uh, whatever you want, like authentication system, using your, your own body. Um, so <laughs> Nick Johnson is over there. So I create the, um, I, I talked to Nick Johnson and a few people from, uh, from the Eastern Foundation, like Gav and also uh, other people from Swarm, you know, et cetera. So I built this first ID box card uh, with the help of uh, Nick. And uh, so basically, we've got like, but the entire village now has got the card. So I can send you the unique uh, a public key of those people and you guys can actually send them money uh, without passing by Western Union. So it's direct money from them, which is very quick. And I've been working on something new. Uh, it's a highly box hard wallet using a new Java card applet and using NFC and fingerprint. The USB token, I put it there because it was cool, but it's not actually uh, functionable. Um, and the idea is to basically use this card to sign transaction because those people, they don't have a smartphone. So the ID box will transfer uh, the template or the, the private key to this card, and then the user can actually put his fingerprint on the card and then sign a, 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 a token transaction and then verify into the box that it's a real person. Uh, the proof of concept. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about this one. This one is really cool. Um, so we, we decided to go to Papua New Guinea. I'm not sure if you guys uh, know where is Papua New Guinea. It's uh, on the other side of Australia. Between, um, so you've got New Zealand, Australia, and then a little bit further, you've got Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea, why Papua New Guinea? If you look at the statistic, Papua New Guinea is probably one of the biggest countries in the world where the people don't have the identity. It's about 90% of the entire population that are not registered. So they don't exist. So that was a big a big challenge. If we can build the ID box over there, if we can create identity in this village or in this country, then ID box can work, can work everywhere. So we went there. Uh, it's about five hours. We got a little bit stuck on the way. Like it was like five hours. And so imagine those those people. First, they don't have a car. If they have a bike, it's probably impossible for them to go to the the capital and then get funded, get the, the money from their son from Western Union because they got to travel six hours. Sometimes they take the bus. I'll let you imagine what the bus would do in this, uh, on this road. So the village, it was very fantastic. We, um, it's called La Lora. You can look online. And we registered uh, people from the village, and they were really... Um, so for the men, it was very interesting because they can sell electricity back to the people into the village. So they got the incentive of buying the box because then they want to... Um, if you can sell electricity by charging the box, then people are more... Um, they want to carry, they want to take care of the box. Uh, and then, so basically what it does, it, you, create, you create your biometrics, send it to the card, and also the public key of first the Ethereum card is linked with your phone number and linked with your public key of your biometrics. And it's a village of 150 t 50 people. So the collision into the village is not very really high, and you use also GPS-based location system. I know like proof of presence or proof of position is not really, uh, it can be hacked. But if you add all this kind of uh, biometric into the system, then you can make 100%, not 100% sure, you never 100% sure, but that the person that was created was unique. And this is the local shop, the, the man. So you see, we've actually done the first transaction. Uh, so this woman uh, received Ethereum from the son, who's in Australia, and they went to the local shop to get the money. Uh, uh, coming, f so I'm looking at the time. Uh, coming features. Um, so I've been looking into. Well, we've been looking into uh, zero knowledge proof. Um, uh, so making, because the main idea about identity, which is very difficult to build, is 
you want to build a unique identity system, but at the same time, you don't want to share your information. So it's a bit contradictive. You, you want to make sure, I mean, any service for businesses like bank, insurance, and all these kind of uh, big companies, what they want to do, what they want to know, they want to know that, they want to be 100% sure that the person they're dealing with is unique. That's the main idea. And they don't really care about your information. The only reason why they actually get your information, they ask for your information, is for them to make sure that you are unique. But if you can provide a system, first, if we can make sure that they are unique, then there's no need for them to, get, uh, to take your identity. So I've been looking into, and also talking with Fabian as well, like is building the editing tip uh, protocol into the ASM, which is fantastic. Uh, so you also like system where you can add multimodal biometric system like fingerprint, iris, and f uh, blood sensor. I'm saying that, remember that this information is not saved anywhere. That's the main idea. Um, so only the David key or the public key is saved. And then you always need to go to the box to sign the transaction. Well, if you use the, only the fingerprint with your card, then you can use the card. But you cannot use iris or, or, finger, or blood sensor. Uh, I've been looking into something called, um, well, actually, I think we are the first one trying to do that. But it's called, um, I called it, then it, the identity AIM. It's basically like an ATM, but more like for identity system. Um, and the roadmap, so we've done version one, version two, um, done, uh, yeah, we're planning a second phase of the prototype in PNG. So we got big institution over there that following the project, I mean, actually part and partner with the project. We've got central bank, all the mobile provider, um, insurance, micro, micro loan, micro uh, credits. So you can, all those different applications can obviously be used uh, by the ID box. Um, so it's for non-profit, so if you guys are very interested in trying or helping or partnering, if you're also building something with identity, it would be cool. Um, well, I think I've got time for a few questions. And um, if you want to, so this one was a non-profit um, project, and if you want to come this afternoon for, uh, I'm building a flying carpet, so it'll be a different discussion, but uh, that's it. That was the ID box.